Hey guys, I'm Joshua Vidovic from Vidovic Arts, and today we have a Demigorgon. That's right, so I've been working currently on a whole bunch of different models for Underdark, or The Underdark, and uh, the campaign is Out of the Abyss. So on my channel, I'm going to be working on a lot of models, and this one particularly is, is an encounter that we're going to have. And um, yeah, so if you're interested in seeing some Underdark models get created and some terrain and set pieces, uh, made and, and how to make them, please feel free to subscribe and follow my channel because I'm probably going to spend the next couple months on this kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, let's see how this one was made and why is it so damn glossy? Yeah, let's get into it. So I created this model over on ZBrush and I started him from the Z Sphere and that's basically a model that you can stretch out and create limbs. If you don't know how to use it, I might make a tutorial in the future because it is probably the easiest way to make a model like ever, like hands down ever, it is the easiest way to do it. So yeah, otherwise uh, you can just look up a tutorial, it's, it's really easy to follow along. Uh, you do need ZBrush, which is a little hard to get your hands on, but uh, where there's a will, there's a way. So, this model was made over on ZBrush, and uh, basically once you got that shape, you can make literally any shape you want, you can start sculpting. Now, as you can see here, the sculpting process is just like sculpting clay, and it's really, really fun to play with. So there's actually quite a few different sculpting techniques over on ZBrush, and I thought I might go over a couple. Uh, there's the main one, which is have a model to sculpt, and the other one is called Clay Build-Up, and it's almost exactly what it sounds like. It's building up clay so you can, uh, or building up a piece on top of it. So if I had my arm here and I painted over the top of it, it would raise the model, and then it would have me more mesh to work with. And I could literally stretch out it to a point where it's like a sharp point and then I can uh, update the model and have the mesh update and then work again and I could literally sculpt anything from just a sphere as long as I keep bringing it out and updating the model. Uh, I can bring it out, update the model and it's a really cool tool and it's I think it's probably the most overused tool on ZBrush because it's the most needed tool to get all those basic shapes done and down on, on your character or whatever whatever it is. Now the other tool that's used is the cut tool and uh, it's, it's usually, I think it's called a knife tool in uh, Mudbox and Maya. So it is a knife and you slice it through and you get these knife cuts in, into your model. and. It's used for a lot of kind of stuff. Uh, you can change the intensity and you can make it look like, you can see these little things on my fingers here, like those little wrinkles and stuff. You can you can do that or you can do uh, intense things, like, uh, like if my hand was to be like this, you could make a really big crease. It's crease lines, but it's the manual way of doing it instead of having the model fold over on itself. So it's a really useful tool. Um, that's used normally nearing the end of the model. Uh, it's just to get more detail out of it. Now there are a lot of tools, and this is just two of the most important ones. You've also got like the smooth tool, which is kind of goes hand in hand with the clay buildup because that smooths it out. So you can you can build something out, and it'll be really sharp and jagged, and then you can smooth it. Same with the cutting. So if you cut a, a crevice into the model, you can smooth it out. So it'll it'll have a slight divot, but it won't be as sharp. And yeah, it's it's really mixing and matching and experimenting with a whole bunch of different tools to make the model be as good as it could possibly be. Now, like I said, I am a bit of a novice when it comes to uh, ZBrush, but I am doing my best and I really have fun sculpting stuff. With this particular model, I think I got a bit of carpal tunnel because of all the uh, of all the that lizard scales on his on his legs. I used the cut tool, and for every single one. I used my finger to click, 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 and I did this entirely on a mouse, but you could use a, um, a Wacom or something like that, but on the mouse, you're just constantly clicking, click, 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 drag, click, drag, click, drag, so it is very, uh, it can hurt your hand quite a bit if you're not prepared for it, and I definitely won't, I definitely wasn't. Uh, but I am happy with the end result. I'm, uh, I'm actually really happy with the end result. Uh, I think I would have changed a couple of things in the way I made it 
Uh, mostly the teeth, I would have just sculpted them straight in, or I would have used uh, sub tools, which I'm not, I'm like a bit hesitant to use them for some reason. I know they're the most helpful thing on ZBrush, um, but I kind of just like sculpt everything in one go because I'm so used to it in uh, like Mudbox and stuff. But I know Mudbox has it as well. But <laughs> sub tools, I need to learn how to use them, uh, start using them, and then I might have a little less headaches when I'm having to drag that over to uh, Maya and then add those objects to the thing. Yeah, I'm, I'll learn how to do it. I, I know it. I know I have to do it. So don't leave any comments down below uh, letting me know that I need to learn how to use sub tools because I'll get there. Uh, anyways, let's have a quick speed sculpt to see how this thing was completely put together in one continuous action. Now, the hard thing to do after this, and this is me being a bit of a novice with ZBrush, because I know you can do it, uh, it's rigging the model. So, afterwards, to pose the Demogorgon, I needed to rig it. I did that by taking it over to Maya, which I normally rig everything in, and uh, it kind of opens up the doors to throwing it into a game, possibly, but it's not going to end up in a game. It's only going to be posed, and... Uh, it took a very, very long time to pose this thing, uh, just because of how high poly it was. Now, I could have made it lower poly, but then you wouldn't get the detail, and um, yeah, I kind of had to make a little bit of sacrifice on the detail. This thing was really high poly originally, so yeah. But I am happy with the end result, and um, yeah, this, posing it, it, was, it, it came together eventually. Printing it, on the other hand, was not the case. We had a bit of cold weather during the night, and my printer was out in the shed, and I advised that's where you shouldn't print, because it gets really cold sometimes, and uh, right now it's almost like 40 degrees, but at night time it does get cold. And the printer didn't like it, so I had a bit of an issue where the print failed. Now, <laughs> I, I actually really mean it failed, failed. The entire top half of the head uh, just didn't print. The body separated and the arms or the tentacle arms completely failed and um, I had to go back and sculpt in a lot of stuff. Also the legs, all the detail from the legs were gone. It was a it was a weird and very bizarre occurrence but I did reprint the model and repaint that uh, model as well. So I've got two Demogorgons. One is hand sculpted mostly and the other one is completely 3D printed. When it came time to painting this guy, I did the top half as a brown and the bottom half as a green. Uh, I'm not really happy with that paint scheme, but it is the traditional way of painting a Demogorgon. Now I went in with the brown and I thought it was very, very uh, light. So I decided to use a wash and that wash decided never to lose its gloss, which I am really not happy with, but I mean, it looks cool, it still looks cool. This thing's coming out of the water, so it kind of makes sense to be glossy, uh, but yeah, like I said, it is, um, it's a bit of a pain because that gloss kind of, uh, it takes away a lot of the looks of the model because I wanted those highlights and stuff, and now it just looks really glossy. So, when I painted the second model, I learnt from my mistake and I didn't use any washes. So, the end results of both of these models are as follows. Here we have the glossy, shiny Demogorgon. And you can see here that he is very glossy. I don't know if the focus is going to change. Are we going to change focus? Oh, there it goes. So, you can see here that the Demogorgon is very glossy, 
Um, some bits aren't, some bits are. Uh, but yeah, it was, it's a bit too glossy. It's fine for coming out of water. I'm really happy with that, because this guy is going to be coming directly out of the water, and it makes sense for him to be a bit wet. But the other version, I decided to go with my Nurgle scheme, which is this right here, and I'm, I'm, it's more demonic to me, in my opinion. It's got that whole really gross uh, feel and look to it. it, looks a bit dry. Uh, the hair is grey and you can see here in the mouth I decided to make it really bloody. If it's ever gonna focus, are you, you are a terrible camera and that's what you are, there we go. So if you see here, I did the mouth as a bit of a like really glossy look. Uh, I don't know if it's blood or if it's just the inside of his mouth. And, um, yeah, it's just really, really gross. Now, the heads are actually completely hand-sculpted, so if I compare the two, which I will in a second, um, you'll see the difference. Also, the arm position is different because I had to sculpt it, and the legs themselves are sculpted. So this kind of opens up an entire different uh, a way of making your model, because you could 3D print something and sculpt on top of it entirely. And if we can see the difference of heads... Uh, there we go. So this one here is hand sculpted, and that one is completely 3D printed. So it's it's pretty uh, pretty damn close. So you don't have to rely entirely on 3D printing if you have the skills to sculpt. You could just print a base model uh, that has you know some shapes and stuff, even if it's low poly, and then you could chuck in uh, sculpting stuff over the top. Now, my next project actually does almost exactly this. It's one of the first times I've used spare Warhammer parts on models that aren't intended to have it. And I'm actually really, really happy with the way it turned out. And I can't wait to show it up to you guys. Now, another thing to note. I have just recently set up my printer. If I turn my camera over here. That there is my resin printer. Now, I haven't even poured any resin in, I haven't cleaned it, I haven't done anything, I have unboxed it, it, it was, is, is a shock, I didn't expect it to be so little, but here it is, and I've, like I said, I've yet, yet to use it, I've plugged it in, I've tested it out, and um, it moves, and it uses the UV light and, and stuff, but uh, I, have, I haven't printed anything, so I need to print some stuff, and I think one of the first things, besides some test prints to make sure it works, the first things I'm going to test is my skeletons, because I need them. Because my undead character in D&D needs to bring some skeletons into the fray. Now, if you do like these models, uh, be sure to share them. And um, they are completely free in the link in the description below, over on Thingiverse. But yeah, if, if you like them, share them around and uh, let your friends know. Um, don't forget to subscribe and uh, let me know what you think of how these turned out. Uh, I know they're supposed to be bigger. I, I understand. I have um, I have an inkling that they're actually supposed to be three times the height of this, which is, which would be that big. And I didn't have the time to print a 60-hour Demogorgon, so <laughs> I just made him this scale. But if someone out there wants to make him that big, um, I'd be really excited to see how that turns out. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, um, be sure to continue printing, and I'll catch you in the next one. And as always, stay awesome, everyone. See ya.